Hello, comrades. Come here, saw bro here today with Foresight. That's right. I have already done a video on this game, but uh, <laughs> I'll admit I was less than nice about the actual game itself and focused more on the voice acting and sound quality, uh, or at least the music that played in the intro scene. Now, after my complaint, uh, or at least my jest, uh, the developer, Strides Interactive, went ahead, took out the music, and replaced it, and are working on improving the voice acting uh, for that particular scene. Now, if that isn't the coolest thing I've ever heard a developer do, I don't know what is. Because literally, they listened to the complaint, they took it in consideration, and they're going to improve it. That is amazing! Like, I, I, don't, I, I, I don't know. Okay, maybe, maybe I'm being a little optimistic here, but that is just, I don't know. I don't know. A lot of developers don't do that anymore. They don't care. Like, they don't listen to the tiny little, uh, you know, complaints and quips that the, uh, uh, the, the lesser man has. All they care about is making money off their game. So it really meant a lot that the developer went through the trouble to do that, uh, based purely off of one person being me saying that. So I decided to give this game another chance. And I've got to say, this is a hell of a lot of fun of a strategy game. It's really fun. Like, at first glance, you wouldn't think it. You would think this is kind of uh, more, more of like a classic kind of RTS style game, which it is. And surprisingly enough, that's actually a really good thing. It makes me think so much of Solar Conquest, uh, the mod that for Warcraft 3, except improved upon and made better and focused purely on uh, the space combat and whatnot. And it's a lot of fun. It's, I, I don't know. I guess I'll just go ahead and explain like what I'm doing. Basically, you start out with your little command center, right? You've got power, you've got money, and you've got command points. Command points, obviously, is your pop cap. Now, if you start building more ships, obviously your command points are going to slowly get taken up, so on and so forth. However, if you combine your ships into fleets, which I'll show you later on in this video, you actually uh, cut down how much command points are actually being used to where you have these massive fleets going at it. Um, and that adds on another, like, a whole new level, like, of tacticalness in the actual battles themselves. Because, like, no ship can fire backwards. For example, let's say my scout has a gun on it, and there's an enemy ship in front of him. He can blast away until he gets past him. Once he gets past him, he is vulnerable to attack from the rear. So, you know, there's tiny little quips here and there in the game that actually, it, it matters positioning and movement of troops, sort of like Company of Heroes. Like with tanks, obviously you don't want your tanks getting shot in the rear. So, you know, it's, it, there's t it's tiny little stuff like that where you can tell the developer actually was going for the strategic experience. They really kind of wanted, you know, their players to actually have to think and uh, make proper movements. And as you can tell, the base building mechanic is relatively simple. Like, there's not a whole bunch of buildings to choose from, which is actually a good thing. You, it means you're spending less time building your base and more time focusing on the actual combat of the game. Which, again, to me, is a really big deal. It's, it's, it's the tiny stuff. I, I would much rather focus on blowing my opponents up than actually having to sit there and build a base. Don't get me wrong. Lots of games have great base building mechanics. Uh, that I actually prefer to combat. Age of Empires, for example. I much prefer making an economic powerhouse than actual combat. But again, that's neither here nor there. To give a little bit more detail in the game, uh, let's take, for example, this frigate here. A frigate can carry a certain amount of fighters and bombers, aside from just being a, a medium, mid-level ship that can take on, go toe-to-toe -to, -toe to most of the ships in the game. Um, so, basically, to build fighters, you got them over here. Uh, here we have a light fighter, heavy fighter, and a bomber. Obviously, each one is kind of better at something. It seems like the heavy, the heavy interceptor, the heavy fighter in this case, is just a better upgrade compared to the light fighter, and that's what I tend to build if any, if like I'm actually looking for, uh, let's call it AA. But you still have the bombers to choose from, which obviously are good against bigger ships. They're good against structures and so on and so forth. 
Just like think Empire at War. Star Wars Empire at War is a great example. Something else that's really cool about this game is like the warp hole mechanic. I love this. Look at this. Look. It's that simple. So it's like you're actually battling on multiple maps. As you can see, this is the resource here, Promethane. So like in this particular map, it pays off to want to get a refinery built in this region. Oh, and it looks like our opponent is actually already sending... Some, are these just explorers? Okay, yeah, those are just explorers. Those aren't actual, like, major ships to worry about. But they're sending them through, and they're scouting us out. Which, smart maneuver. Not a, not a bad one to do. But unfortunately for them, all they're going to find on the other side is death! Ha <laughs> ha That's right. But anyway, uh, that, uh, more stuff. Or <laughs> more game stuff. Yeah, there is, like, tech levels, and you can tech up and whatnot. I have it set to max already, so we can just kind of get more into the nitty-gritty of the game. Uh, so, yeah, just FYI, if you were curious. And this is actually kind of what combat looks like. Again, this is just... These are just explorer ships, so these guys are pretty much unarmed. Uh, just scouts. So we're pretty much going to dominate them. Let's launch our fighters out, if any of them are complete. Yeah, they are. There they go. Yeah, look at that. Look at him fly out of the hangar. For some reason, that just makes me think of Star Fox. I love Star Fox. It was amazing. Played Star Fox 64, baby. That's right. Blast from the past. Anyway, so again, you have more ships to choose from. You've got a carrier. Uh, obviously, this is your ore harvester. These are gunships. Uh, the meat, or, no, this is gunships. These are scouts. And this is the frigate. This is a missile cruiser. And this is the destroyer. Obviously, you know the Commissar, I like the big guns. And the Destroyer is my favorite by far. This is only one faction, by the way. Uh, there is two other factions in the game. Just FYI. Uh, one's in like an alien race, and then the one I'm fighting right now, the in, I think they're called the Insau, are, uh, they're more humanoid, I think. Again, I haven't played through the story uh, very much. I've only played a couple of missions, so I'm a little fuzzy on the more specific details, but I have done quite a few skirmish battles to get the feel and flow of the game. Uh, and I don't know if you can tell, but as far as RTSs go, this is actually not a very slow-paced game. It doesn't take long for units to build, and think about it, I'm basically building my top-tier unit right now, and it's done. <laughs> it just finished. And this thing packs a hell of a punch. It's not going to defeat every ship or every uh, obstacle. It can easily be overwhelmed uh, by missile cruisers or uh, by medium frigates if there's too many or even if there's too many bombers and it's not supported. So that's something else you got to keep in mind when you're playing this game is even if you spend oh, 2500 on the best ship, that does not guarantee you victory. You've got to make sure to go in uh, backed up with a few guys and uh, even utilize fleet abilities and whatnot, which I'm going to show right now. Basically, you can create fleet commanders and fleet advisors. Fleet commanders, when you have multiple ships selected, uh, control a fleet, obviously. Uh, think, again, like Empire at War with the heroes, how they would provide bonuses uh, to your fleets, like Grand Moth Tarkin for the Empire, for example. Um, and actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get all those guys in the this other sector over here and we're gonna go from there I'm really gonna I'm gonna show the whole fleet mechanic from there once I get all these ships together well while we're waiting for this big mamma jamma to get to where we need to go let me go ahead and start by showing you this uh, basically how to hire officers uh, for your ships and so on you have uh, an avatar but I wouldn't suggest using him because he's basically just a basic avatar with no real skills or anything uh, so yeah, I generally just keep him in the command center where he's protected. See, there's my avatar right there. Yeah, so it's better just to leave him there. But, let's enter the officer's mess. And as you can see here, we've got nine different officers to choose from. Uh, all are good to some degree. Uh, as you can see, leadership, intelligence, observation. Each skill has its bonus and so on. Um, how much is she? I think we're going to hire her. Candidates, you murder. And each one has a profile, like actual biography that explains what they are, who they are, so on. Uh, so we'll hire her, and all right, and we'll put her on this destroyer. If yeah, there it goes. If it'll let me, did it let me? It might not have. Yeah, I hired her, didn't I? Okay, good. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, basically, I made a mistake already, as you can see, <laughs> because I was trying to send the officers. That's the officer right there, flying to the actual 
frigate. I the the other one I had outside of the sector, so I couldn't send her there. Uh, so basically, I had to build another ship uh, and put her on board of this one. So same thing, really. It doesn't really matter. Uh, so as you can see, now I have Umara upon this frigate here, and we're gonna move this frigate over to the other sector to actually. Um, merge it with the rest of our fleet which as you can see our command point limits already at 19 out of 24 but once we go and merge it all together it'll go down so once we get her here we'll make her the fleet commander and we will create our first like able-bodied fleet all right now we've got our frigates and everything our whole fleet set together we'll make her the fleet commander and there we go we now have fleet number one and look at all the command points that we just freed up. So now we can build a much bigger fleet. That's right. Like, I don't know, this is just... It's a lot of really simple stuff that I really like about this game. It, it's its very well thought out. You can tell there was a lot of... Oh, what is that? Oh, that's my scout. I forgot about him. You can tell that the developer clearly had a lot of love in creating this game. And even the fact that they're so willing to listen to uh you know the people who actually purchased the game makes me really want this guy to be supported really makes me want this developer to actually uh do really well off this game because you know like i said this could be this could be a big break for them and considering all the mechanics i'm seeing here right now although some people might say oh yeah this is okay it looks you know whatever uh, a little bit more of the superficial types as far as strategy goes this is a great, great RTS title. <laughs> Albeit, I wouldn't mind if my ships move just a smidge faster. Then again, it is the destroyer that's slowing everybody down. So, eh, you can't, you can't be too particular, right? You can't be too particular. Well, anyway, what I'll do is I'll send my guys through this uh, this little uh, war pole here. And I'll be back in a second to actually show you what combat looks like in Foresight. Alright, here we go. Our destroyer is engaging some explorer ships. My other guys didn't come through the portal. I'm not 100% sure why. Whatever. Nope, there they go. Here they go. All right. I guess they're just taking their time to come through the portal. Whatever. No big deal. We've got the rest of our ship ready. Uh, rest of our ships ready to go. So let's find our opponent's base, which I somehow imagine these little lines are giving it away. So move up. Forward, men! Glorious victory will be ours! That's right. Oh, look at that! There's a little ETA thing that tells you when they'll be to the objective. Oh, it's the little things! It's the little things in life that just get me, I swear. Oh, look, so these guys actually have shields. That's kind of what makes them a lot more different than the, uh, the aliens or even the humans in this case. Interesting. I like that shields, though. Look at that. Like, makes me think of Star Trek for some reason. Yeah. That's a powerful-ass shield. Look, it's like blocking... The shield right there is blocking everything coming in. Oh, but it was not enough, ladies and gentlemen, for here we come busting through. Keep in mind, this AI is on easy. I wanted to be able to show this game off uh, without getting utterly crushed. So if I do a future video, which is a pretty good chance I will, I'll uh, I'll show off a little bit more sophisticated mechanics, and, or at least a harder AI. And even then, uh, the developer has already been talking to me and let me know that he plans on implementing even harder AI in the game anyway. To add on to that, apparently they're added in Steam achievements and a more integrated Steam Workshop stuff type stuff and, you know, Steam API and whatnot. Yeah, so expect that in the future. But anyway, this has been Commissar Bro. Thanks so much for watching. Again, I really hope you guys develop, like, uh, help support this developer. I really think they're worth the time. I really think they're worth the effort. Because this is a good game. This is a really good game. And is definitely, as far as RTS goes, for a genre that a lot of people are saying is dead. Which I truly believe is not. And I feel like this would be this is a great way to, you know, kind of revitalize revitalize the genre. But anyway, this has been Call Me Saw Bro, and I will see you next time.